to do the same and not live in fear as I see my career continue to move forward, they'll, they'll know there's nothing to live in fear of. Just be authentic and truthful. And as you say, doors are continuing to open for you and long may that continue. One of the things, Ashley, that you've been doing that's incredible is, and we've talked about it today, is practical supports. Tell us a little bit about the scholarship program that you've started. After the movie premiered in the States, I started getting a lot of messages from girls who were experiencing crisis pregnancies, unplanned pregnancies, just saying, I'm going to have to give up going to school, I'm never going to be able to have a future, get a job, and it was a very common story. And I thought, well, this is a really simple problem to solve. If girls are in need of financial assistance or a babysitter or uh, resources, then we have a means to provide that. So why don't we do that? And I partnered with an organization called Heartbeat International that has pregnancy resource centers all over the world. And I said, how do you guys feel about partnering and doing this and creating this scholarship fund to help girls who choose life for their children and want to go back to school and get their degrees? And they loved it. It was, it was really easy to get started. Uh, we'll be awarding girls starting next year $5,000 per year while they're in school. And it also connects them to a resource within their community where they're getting mentor, they're getting classes for parenting, they're getting diapers. All the things that they might really need are right there at their fingertips. And I wanted to leave a legacy of helping people with the movie as well. It's incredible and well done for your work on that. One of the questions actually that people asked was just the response from your friends and family when you took on the role. You had a particularly poignant conversation with your mother. Tell us about that. I, I was cast in Unplanned in a very non-traditional way. I got a phone call from the producer and he said, I'm so happy to offer you the role of Abby Johnson. Can you get on a plane in four hours? Four hours, not days, four hours. <laughs> And God had really prepared me for that moment, I think, because without hesitation, I was able to say yes and just go, and my husband is a really good man. <laughs> so I left, got on the plane, and everything was happening so fast. I was in pre-production meetings, I was getting fitted for wardrobe, having my hair colored, all kinds of things. And on the fourth day that I was there, my mother called me, and she had no idea where I was. I had not had time to tell her. <laughs> I was a little bit nervous to share Abby's story with her because I knew that when she was in high school she'd had an abortion. And if you've seen the film, as most of you have now, uh, you know that the movie is not about condemnation or judgment. It is just filled with the forgiveness and the overwhelming grace of God. So I wanted to make sure that she understood that. And as I explained Abby's story, she just completely broke down. She was sobbing through the phone. She said, Ashley, I need to tell you something that I never told you before. What you don't know is when I was 19 years old, I was in the abortion clinic for the second time. And I had called my name. I was on the table being examined by a very pregnant nurse. I got really sick to my stomach. I knew that I couldn't go through with it. And I got up, walked out, and I chose to have you. that moment because what was going to happen after that was you had to understand and imagine that position that your mother was in you know understand that woman that was I mean there's a scene in the movie where you're lying on the abortion table you must have thought of your your mother while she was carrying you yeah it, it was a very strange feeling to describe I mentioned to you earlier it, it was kind of like a near-death experience if I can describe it in some way where you just have a flashback of everything that you've done in your life and all the relationships you have and you realize that you were only seconds or minutes away from never experiencing that, it was a very sobering moment. Uh, but I was also really grateful to her. I was never mad or angry. I was just so grateful that she'd given me life. And when she saw the movie, uh, she said to me that she could, she could remember tasting the crackers in the room. She could, she could remember the taste. Um, one really beautiful thing that a lot of people don't know is my mom is actually in the movie. So at the end where uh, different people are placing roses in the fence, my mom places a rose in the fence for her previous abortion. It's a 
an extremely poignant part of the film, and I'd imagine you've had women who've gotten in touch with you as well who've had abortions that the film has impacted them, and what sort of reaction have you had from women who perhaps have felt totally betrayed by the lie that they were told that abortion would solve their problems? I think there's a mix. Uh, it's like they're going through the grieving process, honestly, for the first time. And a lot of them are angry at first. They feel they've been deceived. But the movie has brought about a lot of healing. I have women come to me and tell me their very personal, vulnerable stories. And they're just so grateful. They're so grateful to see it portrayed in a film because they feel the forgiveness and they understand that they're forgiven. They, no one goes so far as to be outside the reach of the Father's hand that they are so loved and that's the overwhelming response is that most people feel so healed from it. God for that. And also just to say for anybody who has been affected by the film in a particular way, please reach out to Women Hurt who are here today. Make sure that you connect up with them or perhaps you might be able to help somebody who might want to talk to somebody from Women Hurt. So that's just really important. What about just the impact on you personally, Ashley? Because this film must have been extremely, um, I mean, I can imagine from the actress perspective, you really have to get into the role. Um, I mean, you have to imagine what it was like to have had two abortions. How did it affect you? It was probably seven weeks of complete torture. <laughs> um, it was, I knew going into the film that it was gonna be emotionally, physically demanding, mentally demanding, and that I needed to do a ton of research to understand everything. But at the end of the day, I was able to go home and say, okay, this isn't my life. I feel deep pain for this, but it's not my life. It's not my truth. I just understand it. More so than just the film, though, I think that the last year of my life is what I didn't expect. I didn't expect to become so involved and really just inspired by the role to go out and be a part of the pro-life movement, to really be a voice and be fighting alongside of you all. And that's been probably the, the most challenging the world thing. Now this I, I have. There's, there's a lot of places and in, in a lot of countries that I've now visited for the first time. Ireland's your favorite though. It I'm is my favorite. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> is an eye-opener in many different ways. Um, the abortion procedure itself, um, but also uh, the scene where your character has taken the abortion pill. You know, something that, certainly the way it's portrayed here in the Irish media is as if it's, um, it's very roast into the way it's portrayed. It's you know, simple, just take these tablets and, but it's, it's horrific, that scene standing in the shower where you know, this induced miscarriage is happening. Do you think people know that this is what happens when women take these pills? No, I think that the general public has no idea. And I think that, especially in the States, Planned Parenthood is doing a great job at marketing it and saying, oh, it's, it's easy, it's just a pill. You don't even have to have a doctor with you. Well, that's a pretty horrific experience to go through when you don't have a doctor with you. Um, I've had a friend who had a miscarriage who, sometimes you have to use the same pill to carry through with your miscarriage, and she said her experience was very similar to what Abby experienced. Uh, and it happens way more frequently than anyone lets on. There are people dying from taking this pill, and the media is not talking about it. No and one's that, talking that is about it. scary, it's something that certainly I, I'm sure most people find quite scary, is, and, and everything in this movie is true, you know? That the scene about the young girl who nearly dies, but she nor her father don't even know that that's what nearly happened. Is this happening in abortion clinics? Yes, and this is testimony from more than one abortion clinic worker. I mean, all of this is straight from Abby, who had an insider perspective working in the clinic. But Abby also has an organization called And Then There Were None. And her mission is to help get clinic workers out of the clinics. And to date, she's had around 500 abortion clinic workers leave abortion clinics. That's a huge testimony. One of the things that also I think people need to be aware of, and it's very disturbing,